Hi, this is Dr. Doug Lucas, the Chief Science Officer of PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. Today I am bringing you some information on the idea of cold exposure or the cold plunge. You may have heard this called the polar dip or you may have heard the Wim Hof techniques, but these are all different ways of exposing your body to cold. So if you look at the headlines, cold exposure seems to be gaining popularity recently. And some of the headlines will say pretty amazing things like it'll improve your immune system and increases hormones like testosterone and human growth hormone and norepinephrine. It may make you more insulin sensitive, which is great for diabetics or increase your metabolic rate or improve your depression or anxiety or make you live longer. You know, all of those things sound great, but my question is, is does the literature really support that? And then from a PhD perspective, we're always interested in finding lifestyle hacks and things that we can do or encourage our clients to do that would encourage and support their weight loss efforts as well as uh, help them to maintain weight loss over time. So my question is, does cold exposure help you to lose weight or maintain weight loss over time? So it's interesting, there are basically four things that I wanna talk about. So the first is this idea of vasoconstriction of vessels. So you know that when you get in cold water, you know, your hands turn white or blue if you're in water too long, and that comes from the vessels clamping down really tight. I talk a lot about exercise, and we talk a lot about vessels getting bigger to help support exercise and sauna. We don't talk a lot about the vessels getting smaller. And so from a vessel health standpoint, it's actually really important to work both sides of that equation. And I think that cold exposure should have some real benefit there. When you look at the idea of weight loss and weight maintenance, though, we need to look a little bit deeper. So if you go all the way down to the genetic level, you can see that Cold exposure causes an expression of these things called cold shock proteins. It's sort of the beginning stages of multiple streams of changes that can have an effect on the body with cold exposure. So some of the cool things that happen from this epigenetic change are improved insulin sensitivity for people that are diabetic or have metabolic syndrome or prediabetes, that's again huge. Um, and it actually demonstrates increased energy expenditure. And so those two things are what we tell people that have diabetes or metabolic syndrome that they should exercise for. Now, a lot of those patients or clients can't exercise very effectively for various reasons. And the fact that cold exposure may actually mimic exercise could be very, very powerful. So that's really encouraging. From a hormonal standpoint, yes, there's some cool concepts about testosterone and human growth hormone, but from a weight loss standpoint, norepinephrine is actually more important. So norepinephrine I talked about um, in a blog on um, uh, fasting and how norepinephrine increases with fasting and how that can help to maintain your lean muscle mass and maintain your basal metabolic rate as you lose weight. So the same thing holds true here. Cold exposure increases norepinephrine and that same um, result of increasing your metabolic rate and maintaining lean muscle mass will help you to maintain weight loss over time, certainly help you to lose weight if you can add it in as well. Now, the cool thing that I didn't know as much about as I dug into this research was this idea of brown fat. So I always thought that brown fat was the type of fat that hibernating animals have and human babies have, but it goes away over time. And that as adults, we don't really have much brown fat and there's no reason to really talk about it. Well, as it turns out, that's not entirely true. Some of us don't have much brown fat, but some humans, some adult humans, have up to almost 50% of their fat mass is brown fat. And it turns out that you can actually change your white fat or your traditional body fat to brown fat with cold exposure. So why would you wanna do that? Well, brown fat has a lot of mitochondria in it. Mitochondria are the energy producing mechanics of a cell. So brown fat is actually there to increase heat. It functions like a little refrigerator of energy, but they can also burn that energy without making you shiver. And that's why bears need it for hibernating and babies can't shiver yet. So that's why babies need it to stay warm. Um, and so as an adult, having that brown fat can actually have a tremendous impact on your um, energy expenditure, your level of your basal metabolic rate, and the more brown fat you have, there's a strong association there with being lean especially as we age, that association gets stronger where more obese individuals as they age have less brown fat and leaner individuals as we age have more brown fat. So it's really encouraging that if we can change the amount of brown fat that we have, we should. Um, so again, cold exposure will increase what you already have and it'll actually shift your some of your white fat to becoming brown fat, which is pretty compelling. So if that's true, then how do I get more of that? 
Well, again, the cold exposure is the way to do it. There's a lot of different ways. How much cold exposure do you need? Well, the literature gives us a little bit of guidance there. There's a lot of different opinions. Um, and I think the big picture is probably more is better. But from a lifestyle standpoint, if you're not willing to do it, it's not gonna be very effective at all. So how much do you need? Well, it turns out there is a, a family of genes called the TRP family of genes that turn on with cold exposure. They are responsible for some of these cold shock proteins and these uh, pathways downstream. The temperature at which they turn on varies by gene. The whole family as a whole, uh, the average is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So exposing yourself to 68 degrees will turn on some, but not all. The colder you get, the more, and the warmer you get, the less of those genes will be turned on. So there's a study that looked at three different temperatures exposed for an hour at a single interval. They used 89 degrees, 68 degrees, and 57 degrees. This was in water. The 89 degree group had no change whatsoever, so that wasn't enough. 68 degrees, those subjects had a 93% increase in their metabolic rate for that and after they were exposed for an hour. At 57 degrees, they had a 350% increase in the metabolic rate. So you can see the huge difference there. And then uh, they also measured norepinephrine and that was up 500% in that coldest group. It also turns out that it doesn't really matter if it's in water, if it's in nitrogen in a cryotherapy chamber, if it's in an ice pack, if it's in cold air, they all have an effect. The colder, probably the greater the effect. So a cryotherapy chamber may have the greatest effect um, if you happen to have one or access to one or don't mind paying um, for the use of one. It can be kind of expensive. So my approach is uh, something as simple as alternating cold versus hot in your shower, cold for a minute and then turn it back to hot and warm up and then cold for a minute and turn it back. Do a couple cycles of that. That may be all you need. Um, a, a cold bath, I think, is something that's pretty easy to do. In my bathtub, about 30 pounds of ice will take a bath um, water down to about 55 degrees, uh, and you can do cycles of that. I like to do three to five minutes in cold, and then a hot shower, and then cold. Do three cycles of that and end on cold, and it seems to be pretty effective. Uh, but again, ultimately, what works best is what you'll do. Um, so in conclusion, there are multiple reasons why cold therapy will be helpful for somebody who's trying to both lose weight and maintain weight loss. This is something that perhaps we really should consider working into either our daily life or our weekly life as a great lifestyle habit uh, and something that can encourage us to be the best version of ourselves. So that's all I have on cold therapy. This is Dr. Doug Lucas with PhD Performance Health and Diet.